I'm Professor Jenna Hartel. Welcome to Information Science. This video describes turns that have occurred across information science in the past 40 years. Namely, the cognitive turn, the affective turn, the neo-documentary turn, the socio-cognitive turn, the everyday life turn, the critical turn, and the embodied turn. Each turn is assigned a visual logo, and each turn is profiled with attention to its origins, champions, signal concepts, key publications, and enduring impacts. You may follow along with my paper, Turn, 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 or this more graphical timeline and map. Both are linked below. Let's go. But first, what is a turn? A turn occurs in an academic discipline when one or several scholars vigorously propose a new set of theoretical or methodological commitments. These alternative visions typically critique the status quo and establish a new research frontier. Turns may occur within a single academic discipline or be more widespread. For example, across the humanities and social sciences, there's been the linguistic turn, the cultural turn, and the material turn. Turns are social phenomena, having champions and devotees. The turners may be established scholars or precocious juniors. All assert the originality and importance of their work within the context of the turn. To be clear, turns are of a lower order than what Thomas Kuhn called a paradigm shift. Turns do not necessarily disrupt the fundamental research questions of a field. Now, let's establish a starting point for our tour of turns within information science. For most of its history, information science has been concerned with physical access to books and documents. Perhaps I could show you a few things about how to use a library. In the 1960s, with the advent of digitized collections, research shifted to information retrieval using new computer technologies. This entire era, with its focus on information artifacts and systems, has been called the physical paradigm. Then, in the early 1980s, there was a cognitive turn. Its proponents argued that an information retrieval system should reflect the thought world of the user. Under the influence of the cognitive turn, the mind became the foremost object of inquiry in information science. A breakthrough idea at the time was Brooks's fundamental equation of information science. It posited that internal knowledge structures are changed through the addition of new information. This turn was anchored by a book chapter on information needs and uses by Brenda Durvin and Mike Nyland. It proclaimed and outlined a new user-centered approach that emphasized subjective, not objective information, internal, not external information behaviors, and qualitative rather than quantitative research methods. A quintessential idea of this turn was Brenda Durvin's sense-making, a framework for understanding how individuals overcome gaps in their knowledge. Similarly, Nicholas Belkin's concept of anomalous state of knowledge recognized how human beings respond to unknowns. I don't know. This turn generated hundreds of models, each suggesting the way people think or act in relation to information. The cognitive turn shifted information science from its technical stronghold of information retrieval systems to the social scientific study of human information behavior. An extension of the cognitive turn, the affective turn, recognized the importance of emotions in the information experience. This turn dates to Constance Mellon's 1986 idea of library anxiety. Her study of 6,000 undergraduates determined that the vast majority described their library visits in terms of fear. Soon thereafter, Carol Coltow reported that high school students feel apprehension, uncertainty, and finally optimism during a library research project. Elfrida Chapman introduced ethnography as a new method to understand the constrained information worlds of some marginalized populations. Chapman's research struck poignant, compassionate chords. Forevermore, the affective turn instilled a sensitivity, intimacy, and humanity into the heart of information science. By the 1990s, some scholars wanted a less psychological approach to information. They championed a materialist and historical alternative here called the neo-documentary turn. In actuality, it returned information science to its original favorite topic and theme, documents. You see, in early 20th century Europe, Belgian lawyer and bibliographer Paul Otley imagined and built the first global information system for documents. It was centered on documents of all kinds. An emerging technology of the enabled network access. 
This documentary universe was organized in the first card catalog. The system was multimedia with film and audio material. Otley sought a universally accessible global information resource that would prevent human conflict because sadly his son died in World War I. Later, French librarian Suzanne Brier theorized the nature of modern documents for the first time, saying, An antelope in the wild is not a document, but an antelope in Azul is a document on account of its ability to index and inform. Devotees of the neo-documentary turn rally around Michael Buckland's celebrated article Information as Thing, which posits the most important form of information is a thing or document. In a summary of sorts, leading neo-documentalist Niels Lund writes, A document is 100% a physical phenomenon, 100% a social phenomenon, and 100% a mental phenomenon. The core issue is how these dimensions are interacting with each other in different ways. Neo-documentalists within information science focus upon the types and properties of documents, their social and cultural construction within different contexts, and their changing nature in the digital age. Also a reaction to the cognitive and affective turns was the socio-cognitive turn. It shifted attention to the social construction of information within communities as they engage in shared practices. In actuality, this turn may also be considered a return because social perspectives flourished in the original visions of information science. To illustrate, an early textbook of library and information science by Pierce Butler opens with a striking statement. Society probably contributes far more to the publication of a printed book than does the author who composes it. In the 1950s, Margaret Egan and Jesse Shera developed the big idea of social epistemology in which information science and its professions oversee the production, flow, integration, and consumption of all forms of communicated thought throughout the entire social fabric. Nowadays, a crusader for this turn is Bibo Hjorland, the architect of a socio-cognitive approach known as domain analysis. It focuses upon informational patterns within academic disciplines. Any information research into a collective, whether a profession, trade, discipline, or hobby, is aligned with a socio-cognitive turn. This turn is widespread in information science. Proponents of an everyday life turn sought to recognize information phenomena within daily living. They asked, what's happening with information when pursuing a hobby, grocery shopping, or having a baby? This everyday life turn was sparked and anchored by Rayo Savalainen's landmark 1995 paper. It introduced a model of everyday life information seeking and its ELLIS acronym. Another conceptual advance was the 2001 book by Andrews Hector, What's the Use? Internet and Information Behavior in Everyday Life. Hector borrowed from geography to identify several daily routines which serve as settings for projects and information. I admit that I was an everyday life turner. My ethnographic study of culinary information used in the hobby of gourmet cooking lent momentum to this turn. This turn significantly expanded the horizon of information science. Following trends across the humanities and social sciences, in the 2000s, there was a critical turn in information science. It unified all approaches to information that aim to expose and challenge dominant social, economic, and political structures. The critical turn creates space for looking at information through lenses such as Marxism, critical race theory, feminist theory, post-colonial theory, cultural theory, gender and queer theory, and technoscience perspectives, among others. A landmark resource for this turn is the edited collection Critical Theory for Library and Information Science. And here are other key publications of this turn. The 2020 murder of George Floyd and America's subsequent reckoning with systemic racism and other cultures of discrimination fortified the urgency of this turn. The critical turn today has such momentum in information science that it may spawn a distinct discipline known as critical information studies. An embodied turn is happening in information science right now. After all, our senses are our primary information acquisition channels. Our muscles have memories that may never coalesce into thoughts, words, or narratives. Our bodies, through their facial expressions, gestures, form, and adornment, project much information about ourselves, including our moods, 
health, identities, and social and cultural affiliations. An embodied Turner in information science, Christopher Lug, is exploring how variations in the body cause people to experience and use information systems differently. Another, Anne-Marie Lloyd, is reimagining the concept of information literacy to include a larger constellation of corporeal and social activities. Research by librarians on very early reading practices heartwarmingly reports that before reading books, babies like to taste them. As we near a conclusion, let's reflect upon the interplay of turns in information science. While this video suggests a linear progression of distinct and separate turns, in reality the dynamics between turns is more complex, layered, and relational. Sometimes, in a maternal spirit, one turn births another. For example, the cognitive turn established an interior orientation that set the stage for the effective know. turn. Differently, turns can originate in a reactive and challenging manner. For instance, the cognitive turn centered on the mind generated an antithesis, the sociocognitive turn, which recenters information on community. The two remain in a sometimes tense opposition. Some turns are convivial playmates due to shared principles. The critical turn and the embodied turn get along well, as in this critically motivated study of gender variant people which recognizes embodied information. Metaphorically speaking, turns can interact as loving parents, squabbling siblings, hey, don't eat my book. or allies. So, are turns good or bad for information science? Well, in a positive light, they introduce new energy and create intellectual excitement. Without them, academic fields and professions may feel sleepy, complacent, or stuck. I can attest that turns capture the imagination of my students who are attracted to novelty and frontiers. On a negative side, turns may be disruptive to the systematic production of knowledge. A righteous streak and sometimes villainizing rhetoric of turners may make academic communities fragmented and dysfunctional. Problematically, when research agendas are suddenly reimagined due to turns, important long-standing and unresolved research questions can be abandoned. This is not always productive. See my paper on the embodied turn for a discussion of the problem. On a personal note, I spent the first half of my academic career motivated by turns. I think I'll spend the second half appreciating all of them. P.S. Keep your eyes open for the multi-species turn, the psychedelic turn, and your turn in information science. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, comment upon, and share it, and subscribe to Infideos to learn more about information science.